Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about how to build a computer. So for this first part, we'll talk about what components you want to buy. I've got a stack of them behind me here. And then in a later video I'll do a step-by-step -step guide about how to assemble it. So building a computer, how hard is it? Actually not very. In fact I'd say it's a lot easier than putting together some of the flat pack furniture. There's only a few components inside a computer, so yeah, it really is quite simple to do. And why would you want to build one? Well, you get a lot better deal than buying a pre-built one in the store. You get a lot more for your money, you know what you've got in, and you can buy the components you want. And the other reason for doing it, so if you're a Linux user, well you don't have to pay the Microsoft tax. Great reason there. So yeah, you save yourself a few hundred quid doing it that way. So there's seven key items that you have to have inside the computer. You need a processor, you need a, you need a motherboard, you need some memory or RAM, hard drive, graphics card, power supply, and a case. For your optional items, you can have an aftermarket CPU cooler, optical drives, so DVD or Blu-ray, and you could even put in some LED lighting or fluorescent lighting inside the case, you know, whatever you want to go for. So the items that you have to buy. So with processors, you really only have two companies. You've got AMD and Intel. Now, AMD are the best value for money, and the Intel are better for gaming. And beyond that, you've got ranges of processors. So for AMD, I think they're now doing the Elano and FX processors. The Elano are more lower range and come with graphics on board. The FX, got different amounts of processor cores there. I think they've got four, six, and eight core. Overall, Intel, you've got the i3, the i5, and the i7. The i3 is dual core, dual threaded. And the i7s are quad and hex core, I believe. You've got all sorts of different ranges on the speed, so it really comes down to how much you want to spend, what you're really aiming for. So, let's say with gaming, you're going to want to go for Intel, quite a few cores, but you want the focus is going to be more on speed. If you're doing HD video editing, you're going to want a lot of processor cores, maybe not quite such top speed. For most other things, just fairly mid-range, mid-range number of cores, mid-range on speed. Mixed components, motherboard. A couple that I've used here. Notice that they are different sizes. So there's an ATX board and an MATX. That's just different sizes. The ATX boards have seven card slots. MATX have four. Then below that, you've got an ITX, which is a really small motherboard, just covered kind of one card slot normally. Now, there's a few makes on motherboards. The main differences between them are how many cards you can install on them. And it's mainly about the graphics cards, which use a PCIe X16 slot. So for a lower range, you're probably only going to get one. Maybe if you're really cheap, it might not even be a 16 speed. It might be an 8 or a 4 speed. Some of them, they do two PCIe X16 slots, but they might only run at both at 8 speed when you're using them. That's absolutely fine, though, if you're using two graphics cards. Then beyond that, if you're going to want to use multiple graphics cards, so if you're really into gaming, then you're going to want quite high range motherboard, which will have three X16 card slots that you can run at X16 speed. And that's only quite complicated. Again, it really comes down to what are your demands, how much you're willing to spend. The differences on makes, I don't know, they're all fairly similar really. For your memory, standard nowadays, DDR3. For a minimum, you're going to want at least 4 gig in your computer, and you can go right up to 32 gig. Again, whatever you're willing to spend, whatever your demands are. For your hard drives, you can buy small solid state disks. They're quite expensive, but are great for running an operating system on. It actually makes your computer really quick, so you put the operating system on a small solid state disk, so a 40 or a 60 gig solid state disk. And then you use a one terabyte or two terabyte for your documents, um, music, videos, etc. Differences on the hard drives, you get 
on the speed, the read write access. This is at 5,400 RPM, tend to be a bit slower, and the 7,200 7, RPM are a bit faster to read and write. And that's important when you look at the operating system. If you're running on a slower hard drive, it can be really laggy. In particular on Windows, if you're running an antivirus check, take forever on the 5,400 RPM. Running a solid state disk, ha, that's instant. <laughs> About five minutes for your antivirus check, I think. Right, graphics cards. The two companies make processors, you've got NVIDIA and AMD, or AMD ATI, really. Windows, you've got a choice between the two, really, AMD or NVIDIA. AMDs are better value for money. Which one's actually the fastest though? I don't know, it seems to vary by each range. For Linux, I would save yourself a lot of headaches, go with NVIDIA. They're a lot better on compatibility. I think all the NVIDIA desktop graphics cards run absolutely fine in Linux. NVIDIA do maintain their drivers very well. You've got differences on range. I'm not that familiar with AMD's range though. But for NVIDIA, notice there I've got the 560. 5 is the series, they're on series 5 at the moment. 60 is the range of the graphics cards, not the entire range of cards. So this is a more of an upper mid-range card. The numbers you have are 20 and 30 and 40, more lower range cards. Ideal more for playing videos, Blu-rays, not that good for gaming though. Then you've got a 50 and 60. They're more your mid-range cards. They'll do gaming. You can hit a decent resolution, but you probably can't have all the effects. Beyond that, it's 70, 80 and 90. They're obviously the higher range cards. You can hit high resolution, do multiple monitors and put all the effects on in the game. Again, it's how much you're willing to pay. The next one, I've got power supply. I've chosen the 400 watt for my latest build. 400 watt is fine for one processor, either the top of the range, AMD or Intel processor, and one graphics card. If you're doing multiple graphics cards, say if you want two graphics cards, you look at needing about 550 to 600 watt. If you're doing three graphics cards, I think you're looking at around 700 to 800 watts. There's a lot of different manufacturers with power supplies. Don't get the cheap ones, they're rubbish. You need to look at spending a reasonable amount, so sort of £50 plus. Gets you a sort of fairly nice one, one that's fairly quiet as well, which sort is of most important for your computer. Very fairly quiet. You can also get these modular power supplies, you can just select which cables you need, and it keeps the inside of your case looking a bit neater and tidier. Then we come to the last item one PC case. Without a doubt, the hardest item to buy, I think. The reason is, there is so much choice and there is so much different range of cases, it's like going clothes shopping. I hate going clothes shopping. There is too much choice, you can spend whatever you want, have whatever style you want. So yeah, you know, with cases, you can get cheap ones, like £15, or you could spend right up to over £500. What's that difference going to get you? It's going to be more the quality of fans and the quality of metal on the case. For this one, I've chosen the mid-range case. So it's a Silverstone. I paid about £60 for this. The case that I bought for my desktop computer, I paid quite a bit more for. So I paid just over £100 for that. And yeah, there's quite a quality difference between that and this £60 one. The case is a lot heavier. It's got a few more fans in it. And they're a lot, and they're some nice quality fans as well. But yeah. It, it's worth it to pay a bit more for the case, so you get something solid and something fairly quiet. The cooling on cases, you tend to get two internal fan, two intake fans at the front. So this case has got two in at the front. And you get one exhaust fan at the back. In some cases you get exhaust fans on the top, that's great, gives you more cooling there. 
Hey, you even get some with cooling on the side. So, do you really need all those? Well, if you're going to run multiple graphics cards, if you're going to overclock your processor, so it's generating more heat, you probably do need all these fans. If you're not doing a lot on the PC, well, no, you just need realistically a case with one fan in, one fan out. Just to get a circulation of air inside the case. Oh, one other item I will talk about briefly. Aftermarket CPU cooler. I mentioned it was optional. To be honest, the CPU coolers you get from AMD or Intel are rubbish. They're very small and they get very noisy when you start when you start pushing what you're doing on the processor. If you're making it work hard, it generates a lot of noise. These with like 12 centimeter fans on them, brilliant. They're much quieter. So it's certainly worth investing in one. This is quite a high range cooler. You can get them for like about £20. And they're pretty good actually. £20 and they're like 100 times better than the AMD or Intel processors. So yeah, I hope you found all that useful. As I said, realistically, building a computer, it isn't that hard. I think the most difficult part is buying the components in the first place. It's certainly a really hard part to choose. Buying the case. The part I hate the most. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.